Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is based on computational physics course. This is the first video. Uh, and computational physics course is based on programming in C++. It is a four credit hour course which comprises of several topics in which compu computer structure, uh, its main devices and the components will be discussed. Then programming in C++, an introduction will be given. After that, the control structures, different control structures, the if, if else statements and the switch statement and the nested if statement uh, will be discussed. And lastly, functions, user defined functions and the library functions will be explained in the video. Now, this video is based on the chapter number one, which is introduction to the computer. Let's level, uh, start, we will start with the digital computer. The digital computer, the block diagram shown over here, it can be seen that the computer system consists of mainly three parts. The main part is the central processing unit while the other part is the input devices and the output devices and the third part is the auxiliary storage device. The central processing unit is called the brain of the computer. It comprises of further three parts the control unit, arithmetic and logic unit and the main memory. Any set of instructions that are given to the computer, input devices are used to give these instructions or raw data to the computer. According to these instructions, the central processing unit stores these data, process these data and ultimately it gives out a result. And this result is shown through these output devices. Here, any of a number of devices that can be used to enter data or the program instructions into the computer are the input devices. These input devices include keyboard, optical scanner and the mouse. While the output devices which gives out the result of the data which has been processed by the central processing unit includes the printer and the monitor. Now the main work that is done by the computer is inside the central processing unit. It is called the heart or the brain of the computer because without CPU, the computer cannot process the data and the user cannot get the desired output. So, the central processing unit is responsible for handling all the raw data and it is re also responsible for processing the data according to the instructions of the user. Here in central processing unit, it has three components, the main memory, the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit. As seen over here earlier, that the third one is the main memory. When the raw data or instructions are entered into the computer by using this input device, it has it is saved inside the main memory. After being saved inside the memory, these in, uh, raw data is processed according to the instructions of the user and the control unit instructs the arithmetic and logic unit to process that data. After the completion of the process, the computer 
formulate the result of that data and in the form of output it is given to the user either by the monitor or by the printer. Here there is another component of the computer which is auxiliary storage. Auxiliary storage is also called the secondary store. If the data is not required at the moment and it is required to be used after some time, it is stored in that auxiliary storage. So the information stored in the main memory are those information that are immediately required to be processed and those information that needs to be uh, stored and can be used afterwards are stored in secondary storage devices. Now after completing the uh, architecture of digital computer, let's move on to bit, byte and word. Bit by definition is the most basic piece of information that a computer understands and it is the shortest form of binary digit. It comprises of either 0 or 1. We can think uh, a bit like a switch which is on and off. If its value is 1, the switch is on and if the value is 0, the switch is off. So this is the smallest unit of storage which is comprises of combination of zeros and ones. So machine language is basically a combination of binary digits. Next, the byte. One byte is a collection of eight bits. It is the smallest unit of memory that can be addressed in many computer system and its relationship uh, between all the different units of data. It shows relationship between all the different units of data uh, in the form of combination of binary digits. The word and a word is a sequence of four bytes or 32 bits. Now, we will proceed towards solving any problem. How the computer, uh, how the C++ program can solve a problem. There are three steps through which the C++ programming can be done. First of all, we have to make an algorithm. So what is algorithm? It is a logical step-by-step -step method uh, through which we can solve a problem. In other words, an algorithm is a procedure for solving problems. In order to solve a mathematical or computer problem, uh, it is the first step. Uh, it includes all the calculations, reasoning and data processing. And it is written in a language which is close to us, which is close to our English language and it is called the pseudocode. And by, uh, after designing and writing the algorithm, the second step is, to, uh, the second step towards solving the problem is flowchart. And the flowchart is a graphical or pictorial representation of an algorithm. With the help of different symbols, shapes and arrows, uh, we demonstrate a process in a program. This is all the process which is done before writing the program in C++ language. The main purpose of flowchart is to analyze different processes. There are certain standards mentioned over here. Uh, the symbol oval, uh, oval shape represents for the start and end of the process. This parallelogram is for the input and output. Rectangle is for the process or the instructions. 
and this diamond shape is for the decision making and the, this sign is used for the connector or it also represents the direction of the process now let's consider an example if we want to write a program in c++ to find radius of a sphere first of all we will write the algorithm there are several steps through which we can we will actually determine the radius of the sphere so this is the pseudo code in which the radius of the sphere program will be written first is the start then second we will declare two variables one is for the radius of the sphere and other is for area of the sphere third step initialization of the variable a fourth step this the expression is this expression will give the value of radius fifth step in fifth step we will print the radius of the sphere and the sixth step is the end of the program now this algorithm can be represented in the form of flow chart like this first step start second step initialization of two variables third step the processing that assignment statement over here and the fourth step printing the radius value and the lastly ends the program this is the flow chart for the program in order uh, in which we can find the radius of the sphere after designing the algorithm and flow chart it becomes easier to solve a problem and this problem can be coded into c++ language this is the main difference between the algorithm and the flow chart algorithm it is a procedure for solving problem whereas flow chart is the graphical representation of a process algorithm is a process which shows step by step instructions while flow chart is a process which shows block by block information diagram algorithm is complex and difficult to understand while flow chart is easy to understand algorithm uh, is convenient to be debug errors while debugging errors through flow chart is hard algorithm show causes uh shows the solution of the program in a natural language which is easy to understand while it the flow chart represents the solution of the problem in pictorial format algorithm is easier to solve complex problem while flow chart is hard to solve complex problem algorithm cost more time to create an algorithm um it's a time consuming process while flow chart takes less time now there are two types of languages high level language and low level language low level language or it is commonly known as the machine language it is the combination of binary digits zeros and ones and we require a special expertise to understand this language this language is controlled uh, is close to computer understanding and computer understand and process this language accurately and fastly without using any translation while the high level language is a simple language and it is easier for the user to understand that language uh, first but it is difficult for the computer to understand it has to con uh, convert that high level language into its machine language then it will process all the raw data and uh, instructions so high level language requires a compiler to convert the language while low level language does not require any compiler it can directly process that language 
remembering code binary codes in high level language uh, as there is no code it is close to the uh, simple language so it is very simple for uh, the user while remembering binary codes in the low level language is difficult so low level but computer takes less time to process low level language as compared to the high level language because low level language is close to computer understanding and debugging high level language is easy as compared to low level language because debugging is done by the user while processing is done by the computer so this was all about the chapter number 1 which which has given you the introduction about the computer digital computer its component next uh, we have discussed about problem solving method the two steps which were involved the algorithm and the flow chart which are involved uh, to make the uh, solution of the problem easier and it becomes easier for us to write the program in c++ and lastly we discuss the two languages